Pina here and um, I got some requests after posting the, um, the tutorial about uh, the clean sound from Holland I had a request many requests to do the same kind of idea for the lead sound so um, I just recorded with um, the backing from um, Gary husband um, Oswald um, tutorial playing drag and play uh, which is amazing I suggest you to buy it and um, just to simulate the sound of the lead. Of course, Alan, it was in constant um, evolution. Um, so, but I think the, the key um, of his tone is not actually the um, very complicated things. I think it's like a normal, good distortion amp with a bit of boost before and etc delay reverbs and stuff but the main thing is the parametric eq the, EQ, the equalization of the of the tone um, and i'll demonstrate that uh, with uh, this recording i've just done um just changing a bit of the eq after um, after processing the the track after recording you will see how close it would be to the previous alan oswald uh, records you know the the, the first day in years um which was kind of more aggressive and more like middle treble uh, tone uh, comparing to like the 16 man of Dane, which is very smooth and jazzy um and that's basically just the equalization of the of the truck and i'll show you now okay okay here is the truck um, i just recorded um, and as you can see I have basically two plugins um, in the truck plus of course the sand to some delay and reverb so the first plugin I have is the tube screamer basically um, I'm using in this case universal audio um, plugins because that's what I have usually and um, so basically that's the kind of distortion i've got to drive it about mid mid top level the output is at the maximum so i can increase the the gain um in the input stage of the amplifier and the tone is quite close as you can see here is is about i don't know 10 o'clock so it's probably 40 percent but i'll turn it off now so you're gonna pass to the amplifier which is an emulation of the Sir um, uh, PT100 thing and um, PT100. So I'm using um, the, the the second channel, which is the Crown channel, not the Super Distortion one. Um, you know, it's a bit far away, but you go about, but again, it's about five o'clock. I mean, middle. Um, bass, I took off a bit of bass, uh, it's a four on 10. Middle is in the middle and the treble is in the middle. Level two is about four. And here the interesting thing. Already in the amp, I have this uh, option here to uh, filter <coughs> the bass and the, and the tops. So I put a filter of 120, basically 117 and five kilohertz at the top so that you got this kind of shape in the EQ. So taking off this the bass, like for instance the the sound of a pick, uh, that sound, or the tops, because in the mix of a of a record like this with drums and bass, of course the bass frequencies um, they're gonna mix with the bass player frequencies and the tops with the cymbals and some keyboards. So it's much better um, to, to cut them off so the guitar plays in his range, his proper 
you know, frequency ranges. So, um, and that's it for this. I didn't use any delay from the plugin. Um, I put this on um, Sir 2x12 cabinet, which is uh, attached to the patch. Um, I didn't really take too much care. I just have um, a nice distortion sound. You can, I can try with some Marshalls, but it's like a crunchy sound. So I'll play you the track um, in solo with no reverb, no delay. So you can hear the sound of the amp, basically. So you can hear um, in this area here, I've got um, a gate, which Alan was you know, really using much. Um, so that when I take off the fingers from the legato plane, the, the amp close up and you have less noise in the voice, in the, in the, in the melody. Um, so that's it for the amp. So together with the, with the Tube Screamer on, I got more distortion and I can work out with more volume and with the tone of a guitar um, to have my, you know, the sound is fit, fit in, the, fit in the, the track. So that's with the distortion. Okay, and now I just add in the delay and the reverb with this sound. And then we're going to sort out um, the EQ I was talking about. So this is with the track with no EQ at the moment. <laughs> So um, now we just uh, introduce this, which is a normal parametric EQ. Uh, <clears throat> I just put up the, the first one I saw in the list. Um, so basically you can see here at 300 Hertz, so it's quite high in the bass, it's like middle bass, um, as pass filter, I took off anything down from 300 and anything up to almost 2000, so 2K which is change to this sound. I take off the, the truck, so you hear just the guitar. So I'm, I'm mute the top now, so it goes up to whatever. You see now the sound is really harsh at the top, and that's where the, the peak sound when you touch the strings comes up and that's why it was so smooth in the in the touch all that harness is gone and uh, it's because between i would say 1500 and 3500 with all the harshness um, in the guitar sound in electric guitar amps and stuff of course, it depends on the amp, but um, a normal amp would be sounding really harsh in that frequency. So you can play with that. So now I'll play with the truck and I'll, I'll play you with this uh, frequency to see how it, the sound changes. <laughs> I stop again about 2.5 before it was a bit lower, but when you fit, you fit the tracks, then you, you're sorted with the, with the sound you want, the, the harshness you want. It depends on the drumming and um, and the keyboard sounds to, to cut through the mix. So what else? Um, same on the bass. Um, if I do that without a bass filter. <laughs> Here is a lot of 
which is gonna mix with the bass in a bad way. So taking that off. <laughs> Just play with this 300 Hertz going lower and see how it sounds. So I think that is the quite interesting um, aspect of Holland sound, but. Um, I didn't see much uh, in the YouTube videos and stuff. So the use of the equalization of the sound is, to, for my ears, to my ears, is key for his sound. In this case, uh, in the middle, um, I work out a bit of uh, like one dB something of four, around 500 um, hertz with a bell kind of, kind of semi-open bell. And again, I'll, I'll let you come up with this volume so you hear the difference in the mix. Okay, and the same here, a bit higher, about a thousand, so 1K. Um, kind of a semi open like the other one, um, and I play with that a bit more. And here you can really hear the difference between the old Alan Oswald and the newer records because he was more harsh at a certain point, more aggressive, like with Tony Williams and all that. So, playing with this frequency, which is about a thousand, you will hear the difference of the different tones he had. <laughs> Changing from 1,000 to 2,000, you hear clearly the, the the sound of a guitar, like cutting the mix through uh, with no problem at all, and and fitting really well with cymbals and everything else. So, I would say that apart the cuts, um, as it was what, talking about, like haircuts for the for the sound, Alan. Um, but in the middle, so you cut the bass, you cut the high, high and low pass filters in the right way and then in the center where the mids are and where the guitar should sound in the band and then you experiment i would say between three and six hundred in the mids and then around uh, a thousand to two thousand in the top mids and that's going to change and you're going to go through many sounds you heard in the records um of course you know he was using analog stuff but that's a way to understand i think um his process um to to define a clear sound uh clean without any overtones and like sound of the fingers going around he was um he was looking for a pure sound and and i think he achieved it <laughs>